Hey friends! I'm working on a mixing project right now and I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you how to mix acoustic drums using Ableton Live devices. Intro thing! Alright, so let's dive in. The first thing we're going to do is work on this kick drum. I'm just going to go on down the line. So, let's take a listen. I'm going to boost this, get a little more gain out of it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a gate on here, because what I want to do is I want to take out any of the extra sounds that aren't when the kick drum is hitting. So gate is a pretty great plug-in. Let's go ahead and listen. So as you can see, I don't see nothing is coming through. Barely something is coming through. So essentially the first thing we have to do is pull this threshold down until the transient of the kick drum is coming through. And as you can hear, it sounds like it's a pretty unnatural, it's kind of too snappy. It sounds like the gate is it's clenching down too quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the release just a little bit. A little bit more. Let's try to find that sweet spot. Now a couple things about uh, gate there's this look ahead time and, and look ahead time is really important for gate to work properly if you give it zero look ahead time listen to the differences flip flip that that attack of the kick drum isn't as nice as it would be if it had a little bit of time to look ahead and be able to see when that transient's going to hit now with that attack all the way down there's almost this snappy but you can hear a little clicking sound so if I turn the look ahead time up to 10 check this out Now you can really hear that first transient happening. Really with, with the gate, for it to be the most effective for drums, I found that, at least with, with Ableton's gate, I gotta give it a, a solid 10 milliseconds of look ahead time so I can get all of that attack in there, okay? What this is doing, it's allowing the plugin to see what's about to happen to it and, and react accordingly. So I have the attack turned all the way down and the, the look ahead time up 10 milliseconds and you get that nice snappy and just for a demonstration, that's what it sounds like at 1.5. It's like little cuts off, and it sounds like clicking and, and, and glitching. At 10, it's perfect. Okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to bust out a, a, a compressor. Now, you can do this in so many different ways. I'm not going to use glue. I'm actually just going to use the standard compressor. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the ratio just a little bit, I'm gonna maybe like, yeah, two and a half, three. Um, and what I'm gonna do is instead of turning the makeup gain on because this is gonna be what I'm gonna base the gain off for the rest of the kit from, I'm actually going to turn the makeup gain off. And what the compressor is going to do is it's going to, at this point, it's gonna help me get some more attack out of this kick drum. Right now, it's not bad, okay? But we could get more of that snap at the beginning. And the way that we do that is we clamp down on this threshold so we've got a little bit of gain reduction happening, okay? And then we turn the attack up, all right? So yeah, maybe we'll start with like six milliseconds. Let's take a listen to that. There we go. And then we'll give some makeup gain back to the kick drum. So this is before the compressor. That's after. And as you can hear, what that's doing is it's Basically, the initial hit of the kick drum isn't being compressed, right? It's not, the, the gain isn't being reduced. It has six milliseconds to not have anything happen to it. And then once that six millisecond is up, it will push down the gain. And so what that does is it, it, it amplifies the initial transient of the kick drum, giving it that attack. So, so really, in a lot of ways, this compressor is, is, is making the, the initial transient louder. And what the, the effect is to me is that it just focuses that, that hit. We can make this effect a little more drastic by pulling the threshold down. All right, so that's a great kick drum attack sound. Now the next thing we're gonna do, see I just, knee jerk reaction, I'm gonna go to uh, my audio effects uh, plugins. Um, so now we're gonna bust out an EQ8 and we're gonna do some EQing. Um, on, a, on a kick drum, uh, I, I really, it's so important for you to avoid prescription uh, style EQ or compression or gate treatments on a drum set. 
each track is unique. Each track has different frequency content and asks for different things. So when someone says, oh, it's a snare drum, boost 5K and cut, just don't listen to that. It's nonsense. Each drum set is going to be different. And so in this kick drum, what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, boost some lows, cut out some, you know, thuddy low mids that, you know, you wouldn't use and, 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 and give it some more attack. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to use three bands and each one of these bands are going to be bell curves. And let's go ahead and listen. So as you can see, there's some sub content, there's some low mid content, uh, and there's a little bit of this high end content. To me, the most immediately obvious thing that this kick drum needs is more snap. Okay, so the snap is in this area. So you can hear there's, let's go ahead and do this. If you didn't know, I have another video on this, but EQ8, you can hit the headphones. And if you click on a channel, it will, it will mute the other the other bands and you can listen to just that specific band so check this out we'll play this track from here isn't that great now we can move this around till we hear that click that we want all right now you can really hear that snap 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 To my ears, I really like the, 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 the 3 kilohertz area for the snap. Now, so now we've got more of a, 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 rounded, a rounded out sound. We've got, uh, it sounds like the, uh, you know, the lows and the highs are at least balanced with each other. So the next thing we need to do is it sounds a little slappy and, and, and muddy. What we want to do is we want to get the body of this kick drum. So what I'm going to do is we're going to try to find that fundamental frequency of, of the kick drum to base this next band out of. And what do I mean by fundamental? Basically the note that the kick drum is ringing the most at, okay? The, the lowest and the, the, the most dominant, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a really sharp, this is going to be a sharp band, and we're going to use the headphone option to solo out that band and just listen. Sounds like 50 hertz is, is, is pretty much where we want to be. So I'm going to gain this back down, and I'm going to open the cue up a little bit. So that's pretty nice. Now, as you can see, there's a bunch of these errant frequencies hanging out just above the fundamental. And with drums, you'll always find that. There's always overtones that are very close to the fundamental. And really... This is one of the main ways to make drums sound really great. A lot of people end up using electronic uh, drums because it's so hard to sculpt acoustic drums, but if you can get this one concept, it's really going to change your life. And, and you, you might find yourself feeling more comfortable using um, acoustic drums. So let's go ahead and listen to this third band. I'm going to make the cue uh, tight again. And let's just go ahead and listen. I'm actually going to turn this off for now, and I'm going to boost some of these... Uh, uh, overtones close to the fundamental and I, so you so you can listen to what i'm talking about ooh, ooh, ooh. hear that like oh man that's that it's that thuddy muddy low mid-range what those are is those are those are here let's just listen while i'm talking ooh. what those will do is that they, they, just, they make the they make the speaker sound boxy that's one term that people will use um what i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna pull those frequencies out of the kick drum and instantly you should be like oh yeah that's a kick drum boom boom okay so i'm going to select both these frequencies so keep that kind of sound in mind maybe give it just a little bit more fundamental maybe give it just a little bit less of this now this is obviously a, 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 there's a push and a pull going between these two frequencies. You gotta kind of play with them. Okay, but that's the sound. Now we have this, this great like thudding kick drum, uh, you know, around 50 hertz. Duh, 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 duh. Okay, to me that sounds like a rock and roll kick drum, which is what we're, we're mixing, we're working with rock and roll right now. I could probably open the cue up just a little bit more of this just to get a little bit less of that thuddy mid-range. Okay, so now that one of the reasons why, I should say before before we move on, one of the reasons why I really like 
the gate using the gate first is because it allows me to be able to make these huge adjustments. Like if I had the gate off, go ahead and listen to what's going on here. Here you can hear that snare drum, you can hear the cymbals. If I turn the gate back on, I have a lot more freedom. I can boost those highs on the kick drum without getting the cymbal bleed. I mean, you can still hear the cymbals, but the sum total of what we're going to be working on is really going to benefit from this, this treatment. Okay? So that's the kick drum. We're going to move on to the snare drum. So as you can hear, there are absolutely other sounds in there. So once again, first thing we're going to grab, we're going to treat the snare drum similarly to the kick drum. We're going to put a, a thresh or we're going to put a gate on there. We're going to adjust the threshold till we get it squawking through there. Now, obviously that doesn't sound very natural. So we're going to open the release. Now with the snare drum, you got to be really careful that you don't make the release too short or else it's going to sound unnatural. Okay. Now, something that's going on with this drummer is there are some hits in here that are really quiet. Just, just ch take a look here. That hit just barely made it through the compressor so or the, the, the gate. So as I look through these tracks, I want to make sure that I'm not going to miss any of those hits because the, the track was too quiet. Here's a small one. All right, it just makes it. Looks like we're gonna be safe. This might be a snare roll. It's not, so we don't need to worry about that. So there, we've got our we've got our gate set. We're gonna go back to the snare drum. Okay. So now the next thing on the snare drum is I'm actually gonna flip the script and put the compressor after the EQ. Some people would be like, "Why would you do that?" Blah. I mean. Just do what you do and get really good at what you do, okay? That's all I got to say about that. So, um, the reason I'm going to do this, I'll explain the reason why, is I want the compressor to react to the EQ changes that I make. I don't like the snare drum the way that it is. I want the snare drum to sound different before it gets fed into the, into the compressor. The compressor, in my opinion, will react better when I use the settings that I'm about to make. Okay, so now we're going to do, do a little bit of a different setup for the snare drum, but... The, the, the underlying idea of finding that fundamental frequency, finding those overtones, and then uh, adding some attack to the snare drum is pretty much the same, okay? So the first thing I, when I listen to this sound is I want more snap. I want to hear that snap of the snare drum, and, and I, want, I, want it to be, I want it to be there. I mean, the word a lot of people use is presence, okay? Um, now, presence is a, is a problematic word because presence for a snare drum is different than presence for a guitar or something else. So let's just, let's just get down to what we're listening to, okay? So I'm going to start boosting some of these areas, and this is going to be a broader, wide kind of sound, okay? So as you can see, it seems like the snare drum wants to be in this kind of 5K area, maybe 6 Actually, I'm kind of digging almost seven. And this, as you can tell, this is such a, a, a broad EQ. I mean, we've got the Q kind of there. I'm going to actually make it just a little bit more tight. And yeah, I'm enjoying around seven kilohertz for that, okay? That's giving this, this snare drum... For, see, this is what I'm talking about. This snare drum sounds best boosting that area. Other snare drums might sound better at 5K or 4K or something like that. But this snare drum specifically sounds best there. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to get, you can see where the, the body of this snare drum is, is coming through, okay? So there's some errant information. I don't need any of this information this low. What I need is this fundamental frequency of the snare drum, so it has a little bit more uh, uh, balls. Boom. Okay. What that's going to do is that's going to help that, that punch of the snare drum. It's going to help it punch through the mix, okay? Tell you what, I'm going to give it just, I'm going to get it just a little bit more gain so we can hear. Okay, that's actually sounding pretty good. Something that we could do is we could introduce another band and we could take a little bit of these, uh, i got to turn this on bell mode, take a little bit of these other frequencies that I don't want out.
And I like that first overtone. It actually sounds pretty good. This second one, though, I'm not so into. Wow, listen to the difference that makes without it. With it. Yeah. Boom. Okay. So now that we've got a good uh, sculpted EQ, let's go ahead and put a compressor out. And we're going to use the same approach, okay? We, what we want is we want to get a snappy transient out of this compressor, okay? Turning makeup gain off. I'm going to put my attack. I'm going to start at like five milliseconds, okay? We're going to listen to this. Clamp down. We're going to bring the makeup gain up. So that's before the compressor. Here's after. So now I've got a little bit more on that front end, especially when he really thwacks that drum. It's really important for drummers to know that really with the, with the the drum parts, the actual like the snare drum, the tom drums, it's best to just thwack the crap out of them because they just they just sound better. And then um, the cymbals hit them, you know, lightly. Uh, a lot of the times you'll see the opposite. A drummer will play his drums quietly and then hit the cymbals super hard. It's really, you want the opposite because you're going to get, like, l l watch this, this snare head over here. This is just going to sound awesome. Bam. Right? Then you hear these quiet ones. You just don't get that, uh, the, 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 the thwack of the drum. It just, it just sounds better. Um, so just keep that in mind. All right. So now we have the snare and the kick. Let's go ahead and listen to them both together. We're going to balance them. I like to sometimes use a visual reference here, you know? It, it can reveal a lot, you know? So to me, the snare drum is quiet. Quieter than the kick drum. It just feels quieter. So I'm going to boost the output of this compressor just a little bit because I've already got the, uh, the gain at, or the slider at zero. And I'm actually going to go into the kick drum and bring it down just a little bit. Okay. So now they sound balanced to me. Let's move on to the overheads. So they have a left and a right overhead mic. Now, in this situation, I think the knee-jerk reaction for everyone is to go ahead and this is the left overhead, so let's pan it left. This is the right overhead, so let's pan it right. This is going to be problematic, and let me tell you why. Basically, there's a lot of low-end information in overheads, and overheads actually serve a huge purpose in the low mids uh, for me, and they, they, they serve a purpose for the snare drum. I mean, really, the snare drum itself, a lot of the sound, and even the kick drum, a lot of the sound is shaped with using the overheads. Okay, so it's really important that you don't just go in here and and, and just willy-nilly pull this all the way over, because what's that going to do? It's going to put a lot of low end in the left and right side, and, and you're, you're going to you're going to mess up your 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 mid side relationship. Another thing you're going to do is you're going to take up so much stereo space that where's your reverb going to go? Where's your panned instruments going to go? Are they all going to compete for that, for that area in the stereo field? So really when I'm mixing drums and some of my favorite records, like, uh, you know, Radiohead Beck in terms of mixing, like, like how, how good they sound, man, the drums don't have any panning at all. In fact, they're, they're dead center. Now I'm not going to do that here. I think that there's a little bit of interesting stuff happening in the stereo world. So for these two two drums, I'm actually just going to pan them just a tiny bit left and right. And let's see, let's listen to what we got there. So you can hear that one wall or one microphone is hearing the snare drum a little differently than the other. Okay. And really throughout this whole process, you're noticing that the overhead right mic is actually louder than the overhead left mic. And this is something that you need to watch. This is important. So, I mean, in this situation, there there really isn't a reason. Like, it's not like they're he's harping on the rights. Well, let's, let's check it out. Let's find out. Okay, so I, <laughs> I, I just ate my words. He's hitting the ride symbol pretty hard here. And so you can hear it a little bit more in the right channel. And that's kind of nice. So I'm actually going to leave that. But one thing I can tell over here is that the gain is still just a little bit off in the in the left mic. So I'm actually going to boost this by a decibel, okay? So that we get a little bit more of a balanced sound. And that way, that crash symbol that's just, you can tell that crash symbol that's just slightly on the left, it's there, okay? So now that I've got my overheads balanced, the next thing I can do is, it, the glorious thing that they did with Ableton 10 is they allowed you to make groups and groups. So I'm going to group the overheads together because I want to treat them as one, okay? When the compressor ducks, I want the compressor to duck along with both 
um, mics. I don't want one mic to compress and the other one not to, because what's what that's going to do, if you haven't guessed yet, is it's going to throw the stereo balance off for just like one hit or something. That's that's annoying. We don't want to deal with that. Okay. So in this group, um, I'm going to go in here and check out what we got. Let's take a listen to what's going on. So what do you hear the most of? The snare drum. Okay, so this is this is what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not going to do too much to just listening to the overheads by themselves after the EQ because the relationship between the overheads and the snare drum is really important because what makes a full snare drum sound is all three of these, these channels together. But let's go ahead and we're going to put an EQ in here and we're going to do just a little bit of EQing. Now, if you listen closely, if you listen closely, you can hear, what is that? There's, there's a ringing tone in here. Let's go ahead and listen for that. There's a ringing tone in the lows that we need to actually notch filter out. I'm going to do it. I'm going to kind of just loop a section here. One, one thing that's really easy is you can just select and loop. I don't know, I, I did that super fast, <laughs> sorry. So select an area, right click, loop selection, it's just a super fast thing. So let's go ahead and find that resonant frequency that we wanna take out. Oop, there it is. You hear that? That's just gonna, that's just, it's just gonna make a mess. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna notch that little guy out of there. Let's make it just a little tighter. Let's listen to the difference. Just a little tightening there, okay? So that's that's a classic little notch. I mean, you'll find yourself doing that sometimes. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I actually don't really mind the focus on the low mids, but we're going to just take just a little bit of, of a broad amount of low energy out of this, just about a decibel and a half. There we go, that's, that's wonderful. Now the engineer did a decent job. There's, 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 a, there's a good amount of, of high end in here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna find out what do we like about the high end and how can we make that work for us, okay? So this is, this is once again, now we're, we're working on the presence of the symbols, okay? So again, that presence area is gonna be different than the presence of the snare drum. Let's, let's, even though what we're doing, if you think about it, is we're also giving the snare drum more presence in the area that we boost because there's so much snare drum in the overheads. But let's go ahead and try to find that area. I'm gonna make my cue a little sharper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the headphones on. Really useful tool here. Sounds like I really don't like what's happening at 8K, but I really like what's happening at 12. And you'll find that this is really common when messing with drums. You like what's happening in one range and another range that's very close to it you won't like. And and also when we're EQing, we want to add and subtract energy equally in 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 close areas because what what that does is that that shapes the sound. So using the headphones, I'm going to find the frequencies that I don't like now. Let's just see what that did. Okay, so now what we've done is we've, we've added some presence, we've taken away a little bit of that area that we don't like, and I'm gonna, actually going to add one more band here, okay? And we're going to listen to this mid-range and see what, see what we want to change, if anything, about the mid-range. So there's a little bit of harshness in this area, and this is more of a broad kind of, kind of adjustment here. I'm going to broadly take out some of the uh, between 2 and 3K, I'm going to just get that a little bit more because I really need that vital mid-range in there. Let's take a listen to this. Now because I've subtracted more energy than I've added, I want to actually give a decibel back to 
that's what this uh, uh, global gain is for. I mean, really, it's for volume matching. Again, whenever you're doing any sort of affecting, um, you want to make sure that you're not really messing with the sound in total. You know what I mean? When you A and B this, you want to be able to hear them at the same volume. Why would you want that? Well, that's just to make sure that you're not going backwards. You're actually making progress, making something sound better. So, so that was before. Here's after. Okay, so I'm not going to do anything else until I put the snare drum back into this sound, all right? Because I'm sculpting the snare drum with every change that I do on the overheads, right? So let's listen. So something that I'm noticing is that because the drummer is hitting the snare drum at different, he's, he has different uh, varying amounts of attack on that, on that snare drum. It's, it's sounding like it's coming in and out of the mix. So I actually need to compress the overheads as well. But when I compress the overheads, this is going to be a lighter compression. Also, when I'm compressing the overheads, I'm not looking for attack as much, okay? So what I'm going to do is turn off makeup gain, and we're going to leave the ratio at 2, all right? As I pull this down, I'm actually liking where the attack is. And I'm actually going to pull the release up just a little bit. So now what you have is a more is a, is a slower acting release compressor. All right, so you're going to be able to hear uh, uh, less of what the compressor is doing. It's just going to kind of be pushed and pulled with the overall volume of the drum set, and that's what I that's what I wanted here. Okay, that's what I have going on. So I'm just going to just solo the overheads one, once more and, and A-B this compressor. All right, so that sounds really good to me. That sounds nice and, 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 and thick. It's kind of ac acting as a thickener. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to the kick drum with the overheads because there's still kick drum in there. And so what I hear is I hear a nice rounded sounds coming from the kick drum i hear i mean i know there's a lot of sub information in the kick but that's okay right now we're waiting to address that here in just a little bit turn on the snare drum along with the overhead and we've just made a world of difference already here okay so now that i'm done working on the overheads i can pull them down in volume and here's something that's really really good to do i'm pulling them all the way out of the mix and what i'm going to do next is i'm going to pull them back in until i like it uh, this is a really good thing to do because if you get married to the idea or you feel like the overheads sound really good, you're excited about the overheads, uh, that's great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull them in until I feel like they're, 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 they're sitting in the mix properly. Um, this is going to get rid of any sort of misgivings I might have about how loud they should be. So I'm bringing them up. Now, something to think about as I bring them up, I'm listening to the snare drum and I'm listening to the cymbals. This isn't... See, I think the... The, when you're when you're starting out, you're you're thinking about overheads as these are the cymbal mics. That's not true. It's the it's it's the closest room mics for the drum set. That's the best way to put this. Okay. So yes, there are a lot of cymbals in here, but you know this is this is for the kit. Okay. This is for the kit in total. So that sounds pretty good. Now I'm at negative seven. <laughs> with the overheads, and I'm at a different area for the kick and snare, okay? And that's kind of what we want, you know? That's what we're looking for, okay? So the next mic we have is a close mic, and it looks like they had a lot of gain on this mic, and that's not bad, um, because when, when you're doing the, uh, especially for rock and roll and for, like, aggressive-sounding drums, you kind of want to have, uh, you want to have, you want to definitely record with room mics, and... They, they did a good job here. They had two different mics to choose from. They have a close and a far. Um, let's go ahead and listen to what the close mic sounds like. So there's a lot of that low mid-range blah, 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 kind of ex explosive kind of sound. And that's actually, we want that. We, we, we want to get some of that explosive kind of sound in there. Now, once again, do not ever listen to people telling you that there is a prescription treatment for microphones or, or for, for which microphone is where. It doesn't matter. Every single sound begs for something different. In this situation, what I want this close mic to do, and as well as the far mic to a certain degree, what I want them both to do is I want them to, to smash into a compressor in a really, really drastic way. 
And the reason I want that is because what I want to get is this boomy, aggressive kind of addition to what I already have in the drum set. And I'll, I'll explain what that means as we go. But in this situation, instead of trying to get attack out of this mic, first of all, this mic is farther away from the drums than these mics. So it's never, even if I turn the look ahead time all the way up to its highest setting on the compressor, it's never going to get in front of, it's never going to get in front of these sounds. Okay. So let's go ahead and play. This, this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn the attack down. I don't want attack out of this. I actually want a longer release time. What I want this thing to do is I want it to just, every time there's a hit, I want it to and come back in. What it's going to do is it's adding sustain to the kit, to the whole kit, okay? And I'll show you what that's like. We're going to turn the ratio up just a little bit. This is an extreme compression, okay? Makeup gain is off. Now you're like, oh man, that sounds pretty bad. Why would you want to do that? Well, what this is doing is we're, we're making a sustain track for the for the kit, okay? This is bringing a natural sound to the room. And also, as you can see, this room, it's just all over the place. Blah, 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 blah. Like it almost looks like it's another drum. What we don't What we don't want is this, once we set this, we want this to kind of be a set and forget kind of thing. Like we want this to sound pretty much the same level th no matter how loud the drum set is being played no matter the part or anything like that, because what it's going to do is it's going to grant us an extra dynamic tool to add to the drum set, okay? So, it looks about right. I mean, we could even go more extreme, but for now, since we have another room mic, we're going to leave that there. So, let's go ahead and take this out, turn it all the way down, okay? And we're going to just listen to this mic along with the mics we've already done. All right, so now we're going to reintroduce this this close room mic. Now, you say, "Well, it almost sounds like there's reverb on the snare drum." Yeah. I mean, really in a lot of ways like when you hear a drum set, maybe the first thing you think of is, "Oh, we're putting reverb on the drum set." That's not necessarily true. A lot of the times what you're hearing is is a well EQ'd and well compressed room mic, okay? So what I'm noticing though is that there now that I brought it in and, and I'm listening to the rest of the drum set, um, I'm noticing that there's a lot of low mids. Uh, and it's it's kind of taking over. So what I want to do is I want to come in here and actually remove some of the lowest material by using a low cut. And I'm going to just take a little bit of those low mids out because, the, you know, when you're mixing, it's really important to remember that low mids always build up. They just build up, build up, build up. The more tracks you have in a in a song and the more low mids you have, they're just going to kind of build up. So, and, and also, why am I not soloing this track? Because now I really have to start thinking in terms of the whole drum set, okay? So I'm going to remove a little bit of this low mid area. Here's what we had before. Cool. So now, yeah, that sounds really great. Uh, now let's go ahead and, and do a similar treatment to this far microphone, okay? I'm going to go ahead and, yes, I'm soloing it right now, but that's because I'm working with the compressor. I just want to get the compressor dialed. Um, we're going to go up in ratio to about three or something. And then shorter attack, longer release, and let's go ahead and listen. Now this microphone, I don't know if this is really the best sound. You're hearing a lot of, of uh, phasey kind of sounds. There's, there's, it's probably close to a wall. Um, it's not really the best recording of it. But we can use this. There are still parts and aspects of this that we can use, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and add this back to the rest of the kit. Now that's nice. What it's doing is it's giving a little bit of reverb to the snare. But I can also hear, I don't know if you can hear this, but I can also hear that the very, very top end of this microphone is kind of messing and, and phasing around with the, the overheads. Check this out. I'm going to actually pull down some of the highest highs here and listen to the difference here. Notice how now the, those those higher transients, the, the presence of the, the overheads doesn't seem so washy. It's kind of now focused not focused, focused, okay? And also there's a lot of bass in this, a lot of bass. So we're gonna low, we're gonna low cut some of that bass out of there. 
But what I do like is I do like the boominess on this microphone. So turn it up just a little bit more. And now, now what we're going to do is we're going to A, B. I'm just going to use the key mapper, good old Q button. This is without the room mics. This is how much room mics really do. It's so important when you're recording uh, an acoustic drum set to use room mics. I'm going to turn them on. They just do so much. They do so much for your sound. Okay, so I like the sound of the close mic. The far one, I like the reverb that it adds, but we're still going to just bring that back a little bit. We're going to back both of these off just a little bit. Another thing to, another note with room mics, you, you might want to have more room mics when there's less instruments and less room mics when there's more instruments. Because, I mean, what you're adding is you're just adding density. If you have a, a, a band that has a really busy mix, you might find that the room mics aren't really doing that much for you, okay? So, yeah, I, that's, that's a good level for me right now. Um, now, the last thing we have is a hi-hat mic, and this is an interesting mic to use. Um, in a situation where you have a drummer that's playing very soft drums and very loud cymbals, like, like this, this is a good situation here because that's the, kind of what's happening. I hear that hi-hat pretty well, but this microphone could add something, so let's go ahead and take a listen to it. So it's very close to the hi-hat. So what, what that tells me is we could use the attack of the hi-hat here. Um, you have to be careful about using a compressor on a hi-hat because what it's going to do is it's just going to be adding yet another microphone to the kit, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and... First of all, I mean, the most immediate thing to me is uh, the EQ of it. I mean, this, this hi-hat sounds very, very strange. It's very, very... It's got a lot of lows in it. Uh, we don't really need any of that information. We're, we've got that covered, okay? So I'm going to turn off some of these bands, and we're going to just pull this up until we like it first. All right, so now it's starting to sound like a hi-hat, but the next thing I hear is that there's just a lot of that harsh, uh, tinny... What do we got here? Yeah, that's interesting. So, so it so sounds like 5K really needed to come out, and uh, we have like these initial kind of hits here that are in the lower ranges, and then some of the brighter top end. Okay. We obviously can't gate this sound because I mean, there's 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 tiny hits and big hits, right? So let's go ahead and add this to the rest of the kit by turning it all the way down and then bringing it back up. I mean, you'd be surprised how little of this mic you actually need. crazy. It's really just about right there is really all I needed of that mic. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about phasing. Um, when you listen to the kick drum and you add the overheads, a lot of the times people will face the overheads down. Sometimes they'll face them forward and depending upon the, the kit and the distance, um, this next thing I'm going to talk about is really important. So when I listen to the kick drum and the overheads, let's listen to the kick drum by itself, right? Nice snaps. Sometimes you need to listen to these, these microphones and, and try to determine whether or not the fa the phase is the same, meaning that you know, the, the waveform is going up and down at the same time, okay? Uh, with the kick drum, it might be going up while the, while the, while the kick drum in the overheads is going down. Uh, and I can better explain that just by having us listen to this. Now, the utility plugin has a phase invert preset on it. So I'm just going to drop this on here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to A and B it. This is really, you know, even if you don't really know exactly what you're doing, this is really important, okay, just to try out. If you feel like the sound is better when you invert the phase, then go with it, right? Um, let's go ahead and listen to the difference. So we're just listening to the kick and the overheads. And I can tell you right now that in fact they had the microphones pointed down. When I turn the phase invert on, I, I hear the kick drum better. All 
Okay, there's more attack on the kick drum. What that means is that the 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 transients are now lining up better. Okay, now with the snare drum, let's go ahead and take a listen to this. Sometimes the snare drum and the overheads aren't both. Maybe the snare drum is pointed at slightly at an angle. Maybe it was mic'd from under the bottom. What we need to do is we need to determine whether the snare drum needs to be inverted or not. So I'm on the snare track. So let's go ahead and listen to the difference. It does not. So so likely the snare drum mic was pointed slightly down or maybe like right across. Using the phase invert doesn't make anything better for us, okay? So now that that's out of the way, what I'm realizing is that if I'm going to phase invert the overheads, I think it would be probably best done to the kick drum itself. And the reason I'm doing that is because likely the kick drum mic facing the way that it was, it would make more sense to have it on here instead of having to invert some of these other mics, such as the hi-hat and the snare, right? So let's go ahead and take a listen to this, the drum set as a whole. Okay, so uh, <coughs> the next thing I'm going to do is the drum set sounds natural now to me. But what I'm going to do on, the, on the, the, the overall drum bus, okay, this is where all the drums are going to. Um, it's really important that you, that you do this as well. Uh, you, you bust the drums together because I believe that there are treatments that need to happen to the whole kit that can really, that can really help you out. So uh, let's go ahead and take a listen to this drum set. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some of these room mics out just a little bit more. And the reason I'm doing that, I'm going to take three decibels out of each one is because I know what about what's what's about to happen next. We're going to compress the entire kit, okay? And what we're going to what we're going to use is we're going to use the glue compressor, okay? This is this is my favorite first step. Now, when I when I'm using this glue compressor, something that something that's going to occur is um, we're going to create a a high attack kind of like you know, dynamic sound, but that's also kind of sounding what I would, what I'd like to call it grabby or squashy. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn the attack up. I'm going to turn the release actually to automatic. Okay. What this does is depending upon the hits and how long the hits are, it'll change the release time based on the information. You don't really need to know more than that. We're just going to, we're just going to mess with this. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the threshold down. So it's starting to compress. That's pretty extreme. We're going to a little bit of makeup gain so that it's kind of the same sound. Now, what is this doing? What's really important that we do is we use this makeup gain to make it the same volume and we listen to what it's doing. Okay, so this is when it's off. And that's when it's on. What it's doing is it sounds like to me is adding sustain to the whole kit. Okay, and that's what we're going for. But what is it also doing? It's also kind of removing some of those initial transients, and that doesn't sound good. But we really like the uh, the the sustain that it's adding. So so the move here, this is a different kind of thing. This is what's known as parallel compression. We're actually going to take the dry wet and turn it all the way off, kind of just like we're pulling the volume all the way down in some of these like room mics. This is the same. This is the same idea. We're adding that sustain back in, but in a controlled way using this glue compressor. Okay. And as I bring it back in. Listen to the sustain go up. So this is without the compressor. So now what that's doing is it's adding a little bit more impact. The boom, boom, clack. You know, you're getting that that nice clack happening out of the drum set. You're getting those 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 fat grabby. It's hard to explain those grabby lows. You know what I mean? Listen to the lows without it. Sure, the lows are there and they're nice and dynamic. But the, when I want that low end to stay in, ch check it out when I turn it on. Da, 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 da. So that's adding a little bit. I mean, you could also think of this as adding a little bit of, uh, of aggression or um, impact to the drums, right? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually add a little bit of saturation. So sat sometimes people will like to put a saturator first. I kind of like to control the dynamics of the drum set before I use a saturator, okay? And let's go ahead and listen to... I'm going to leave it on this analog clip mode, okay? Let's go ahead and listen to what the saturator does. Whole lot of nothing. And that's because the gain isn't loud enough to get to kind of the clipping level. On, on the analog setting, I've noticed that it really doesn't do much until it passes this line, okay? So 
For every decibel that I add, I'm going to also subtract that same amount of decibels in the output to try to get somewhat of the same volume when I AB the effect, okay? So we haven't passed the threshold yet, so I'm going to add more gain. Let's go to 20 and see what happens when we do 20 and 20. That's without it. Okay, so you can hear the saturator start to work. So, yes, it does sound like ball sack. <laughs> but let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do with saturator to, to work with the drums in a way that's going to be beneficial to our mix. Okay. Something that the saturator is doing is it sounds relatively the same volume when I turn it on and off, right? But what's interesting is the saturator is actually p pushing out a bunch uh, less peak um, a level, okay? And we're actually bringing our RMS level up, meaning the, 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 the brighter green, right? Here's with it on, here's with it off. And it's adding a little bit of, of transient sounds to the low end because the low end is having trouble passing through the saturator uh, as easily as the top end. So what this means is the first thing we need to do is really work with the, the saturator's tone, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with this bass control, okay? Now you can hear more of the low end as I turn bass up, getting distorted. If I turn it down, less of the low end is getting distorted. So where is the area that I like it the most? Well, I gotta say that I really do like that, that transient that it's adding to the low end. And, and that's kind of the sound I'm going for. And I'm also trying to control some of these transients, right? So the next thing I'm going to do now that I've set this gate, and I like that, is I'm going to pull the dry wet all the way down once again. We have, that's why that dry wet exists, okay? It, it's so you can blend the effect back in with the original. So I'm going to pull the dry wet back up. Until I'm getting the kind of control and the sound I'm looking for. And, and really, w what you can hear with this saturator is there's, a there's some action on the snare drum. It's keeping the snare drum in level. But really, what this one is doing is it's working with the kick drum. You know, we're adding more snap to the kick drum while, you know, uh, leading, you know leaving some of that original um, dry signal in there. This might be an effect that sounds pretty good in different positions depending upon the amount of drive that you're using. In this situation, I'm using a fair amount of drive. And man, does that sound good right about, right about halfway. Now, the saturator is going to change the tone of, of your drum set. So this is why an overall EQ for the entire drum set is a really good idea. So we're going to grab an, e an EQ8. <coughs> Pardon me, I've been, I've been sick. I'm a little annoying to listen to, I'm sure. But let's go ahead and work with this EQ8. So... Now, the first thing is, is like... I don't need all of that extremely low uh, uh, sub information. There's just no reason to have it, okay? So I'm going to just do a very, very low, low cut, okay? I don't want to take a lot of the sub out of the kick drum, so let's just listen to the difference. A lot of you that are just listening with um, uh, kind of consumer headphones or... I mean, especially if you're listening on a computer or, or your phone, you're not going to hear this at all. But I'm using high-quality headphones with a DAC so I can really hear what's happening here. So now it just sounds a little bit less explodey in that, in that super low sub-range. Okay, so now that that's taken care of, I want to make this sound a little more um, balanced across the entire spectrum. And what I hear at this point is I hear a lot of... There's, a, there's a, a little bit of low mid action that I don't want. But I have to be careful there because look where that transient of the snare drum is. I don't want to mess with that. I like the balance. So this is one of those things that you got to be really surgical with. And I'm turning the cue down. I'm going to turn on the headphones. Let's listen to this. That's the snare drum. That's the kick drum. So right about there, just a little bit out of there. And obviously with overall EQ, you want to be, you know, you want to be just a little bit less drastic, okay? We're not in the track. We're not just, you know, clocking this thing super hard. Um, these little changes are going to make huge differences later when you start to add the bass guitar and all the other, all the other 
uh, instruments. And now another thing that I would say is that with the overall EQ, I would probably be, if, if this was a tutorial on, on fully mixing the whole band, I probably wouldn't do much more right now than if I had the other instruments with me, because I mean, nothing matters by itself. If you're, I mean, this is, this is, if you take anything away from this, nothing matters by itself. It only matters in relation to the other instruments. Okay. So, but because that's not happening, we're just going to do a little bit more to the drum set. So I'm going to turn the headphones off. We're going to add just a little bit of top end. Just for balance. And remember, when we add energy in places, sometimes we're adding energy in places we don't like. So there's, there's, a, there's a frequency area that I'm not enjoying when I'm adding just, what is this? I mean, just a dB and a half of, of, of gain. There's something happening in that area, but it's hard for me to identify. So I'm going to turn on the headphones, make the cue a little bit more surgical. Something sounds cheap. There we go. So, without the EQ, with the EQ. Very subtle, but very important. Okay, so there you go. That's the whole kit. Um, a couple, a couple things I should mention. Ableton 10 released this thing called Drum Bus. Let's just take a look at Drum Bus. So what Drum Bus does is it's essentially these devices here, but kind of all, all smashed down into one. You can also use this boom feature, and it's a notch filter that you can apply to the kick drum to give the kick drum a note, um, or to have an emphasis on a on a certain note. It has a compressor before the the input stage. It has a uh, drive control to add a little bit of distortion. A separate drive control. It's kind of voiced for crunch. I used it. I don't like it. Um, whoops. So you know. Also, I know that everyone watching doesn't have 10, so I just that's that's why I didn't use that. Um, but if you like the way that, that that it sounds, and I've used it before, and I've gotten results that I like, you can use it. But I like to have uh, modular tools, and I like to be able to order them in different ways. Um, so if you like that device, it's a fixed architecture, it's a totally different approach. You can use that. Um, and I should say that there are distortions, especially saturators out there that are more feature laden, and but but they're you know they're plugins. Um, some, some ones that come to mind in terms of saturation are, uh, Saturn by Fab Filter, incredible, incredible plugin. And then also, uh, there's another really good one by Sound Toys called Decapitator, I think is how you say it. How do you say it? Let me find it. Uh, yeah. Decapitator. And that one's really great too. Um, great for, for saturation. In terms of EQ, obviously I'm going to go with FabFilters Pro-Q 2 or 3. They're both great. Um, you know, those are, those are kind of my go-tos. The glue compressor is fantastic in Ableton. Like, I, I mean, they teamed up with this Cytomic company and I just they, they knocked it out of the water. It's such a great sounding EQ. It doesn't really do the kind of stuff that you want to do within the track, but for parallel drum compression, I'm still using it. I love it so much. Um, in terms of like uh, the the compressors inside the kits, I'll use Ableton's compressor, especially because of the handy dandy sidechain function. Um, but I also tend to use FabFilters uh, Pro C2. It's really nice. There's a couple other ones that I'll use, like the UAD one. Um, but yeah, I hope that you got usage out of this. Please like, comment, subscribe. You can check out my Patreon link if you want to support the channel. Um, I'm glad you watched this, and I hope that this helps you with your drum EQing. Thanks so much. See ya.